Last week, a male Maltese was brought in for having blood in the urine, and this was the urine sample collected. There are a few possibilities to why blood is present in the urine. One, it could be due to trauma, a trauma injury to the bladder, or it could be even to the kidneys. Secondly, there may be an infection somewhere along the urinary tract. Lastly, it could be a tumor within the urinary tract. Therefore, in order to determine the cause, further examination had to be done. So what is urinary tract infection? It is a bacterial infection along the urinary tract. It can be classified into three categories. Upper urinary tract infection, cystitis or lower urinary tract infection. For the upper infection, the affected organs are the kidneys and the ureters. For cystitis, the infection occurs in the bladder. As for the lower infection, the urethra becomes infected. Upon examination, the weight of the dog was recorded. The vet listened to the heart rate. The abdomen was palpated to check for signs of pain and enlargement. Last but not least, the vet asked questions to obtain medical history of the dog. It was noted that the dog had been feeding on dry food and had insufficient intake of water. It started urinating blood for a day and was brought in as soon as possible. Firstly, we did a blood collection so that we could send the blood for the test to show for any abnormalities. As you can see from the picture, the dog is firmly restrained by the veterinary technician on your right. He holds the dog close to his body and extends the front paw. In this case, blood is withdrawn from the cephalic vein found on the medial aspect of both the left and right front limbs. Prior to withdrawal, alcohol can be poured over the limb to allow for easier detection of the vein. The veterinary technician then squeezes the upper forelimb slightly to allow the vein to protrude. Otherwise, a tonic key can be used. This is done to occlude the blood supply to the vein. The veterinarian is then able to insert the needle to withdraw around 1 to 3 mils of blood. Eventually, the blood collected is divided into three tubes, red, grey and purple. The red tube contains claw activator and tests for lipid profile. It has to be inverted, not shaken, five times before being sent to the lab. The purple tube contains EDTA, an anti-clotting agent, and tests for full blood count. It has to be inverted eight to ten times. The grey tube contains sodium fluoride and tests for glucose. It also has to be inverted eight to ten times. Now, the result of the blood test did not show much of the dog's condition. This is because the kidney and liver enzymes are normal, so this shows that there was normal function of both the liver and the kidney. Therefore, a urine test would have to be carried out to, sh to determine the root cause of the problem. In this case, a semi-plastic urinary catheter was used. This can be used for either sex, male or female. The tip of the catheter was lubricated with lubricant before insertion to minimize urethral trauma. The urine is then withdrawn with a syringe attached to the other end. The urine test revealed infection in the urinary system. There was a lot of blood and white blood cells. The white blood cells indicate a bacterial infection of the bladder, while the red blood cells indicate an inflammation of bladder. However, no biochemistry can be done due to overwhelming amount of blood, as well as x-rays show that there is no radiodense urinary stones. The dog was diagnosed with cystitis. The x-ray did not show any stones present, so urolithiasis was eliminated. The kidney enzymes were also normal, as the levels of urea and creatinine were normal, so the kidney was not damaged. If it were a lower urinary tract infection, less blood would have been present. Heavy bleeding indicates damage to the bladder, therefore the diagnosis of cystitis. For the treatment, the dog was given IV drip to increase its fluid intake so as to produce urine to flush out the bladder contents. Antibiotics was given to eliminate bacterial infections 
and pain relief to reduce pain. The dog was discharged after a day of hospitalization as he was recovering well. There was less blood present in the urine and the dog seemed happier. To ensure that he had fully recovered, a review was done 10 days after discharge.